Okay. So, hi everybody, how we all doing? Welcome to Caveman to Cosmos as we will continue. We are on episode 7. And we're ready to hop into a completely new era, the ancient era. <laughs> Do wheel and queen. So even though we just entered the era, we're still not too different from how we were in the prehistoric. We don't have agriculture. We don't really have much of anything, to be honest. Stonehenge is just about to be uh, finished here in Zuko. Britannia is collecting a bunch of money. So we can go ahead and build a bamboo bridge. And get ourselves a nice little hut. Now that we're in a new era, we can choose our first little, um, basically, away. Ways are basically little functions for our civilization. It'll give us a little bonus for this era. And I want to go with the uh, Way of the Leech, which gives us better health care. Because this era is pretty nasty for just being unhealthy diseases. We got a few new wonders that we can also build. But before we do any of that, we want to just... We just want to sneeze. <laughs> we just want to get ready and uh, kind of do some general setup. Now, also we want to look into our technology. <laughs> so we just got a, sanita a uh, sanitary lifestyle. So our first technology that we want to actually go into is community. This here is a very primitive form of writing. Metalgrams. This will give us a cast system. Taxonomy. Unity. A cast system, folk dance, folk music, sacrificial cult, which will lead into agriculture and pottery, which then will pick up bread making and taxonomy. From there, we will go into mining and sailing, picking up the wheel, apiculture, fungi culture, oysters, ancestor worship, polytheism, and we'll see what everything looks like once we get there. Now, the thing about the ancient era is we're going to be in this for a little while. There's a lot of technology to get through. But the big goal that we are really going to be wanting is writing. Once we hit writing, we'll be fully matured into a full-fledged civilization. Now let's get into the uh, more pressing issue. If anybody remembers, we left on a little bit of a cliffhanger as there is a lot of barbarians and Neanderthals just right outside of our borders trying to get into our little basically our little uh, coastal area here that is protected by this mountain range which only has one real way through which is here through Potter so we have to try to defend this and get rid of these guys <laughs> and we just finished Stonehenge
It may not be up there and flashy as the newer games, but uh, Caveman the Cosmos really brings a whole new life to Civilization 4. Definitely going to upgrade all of our archer, all of our uh, slingers into proper archers. Let's see if we got anything. Looks like the enemy army does realize what's going what's on. The, the AI has been improved. Quite consistently from the uh, um, base game. Looks like we got some firefighters. That are becoming an issue. So we just build some torches and let's get our health. Not health care, but our... Uh, Food in order. Potter's gonna have a really hard time because it's in the middle of um, basically a swamp. A bunch of swampland. It's not really going to enjoy it being there. Until we can get a lot of this drained, but before we even get any of that we need irrigation. Potentially, it will become a very nice section of territory. Alrighty, and we're going to have our other defensive stack that we called up. Go ahead and pull up. And go into the defense. Now, hopefully, the Flying Dutchman has decided to leave us alone. And we can actually adventure a little further into the Bay of Iroh without being tormented. So they're up on a hill, but we gotta take them down. We have obsidian weapons, they have stone weapons. We should be able to have a good advantage, even though they are on a hill. And look at that. Nice good advantage. Our war parties have seemingly cleared out everything. We're gonna keep this one here. Have you skip? Now we do have more civilizations starting to emerge, but our newest neighbor is our closest neighbor, which is the Australian civilization. I figure they'll try to settle around this coastline. They're not too far behind us, and we should be seeing the AI popping into the ancient era really shortly. There is another, um... Judging from the color blue... Yep, this is the Israeli... So the uh, Israeli Empire is over here. But being that, um... Getting mountaineering is required to get over our mountains. We don't have to really worry about any civilizations that pop up over here. Oh, there's some gold. Honestly, I'm more worried about volcanoes exploding again over here. Basically, anywhere where you see this rocky area could be a volcano. Oh, look at that. We got another hunter of Neanderthals. Now, the Neanderthals should be starting to disappear because roughly after 10,000 BC mark in this game, they're going to start spawning less and less and less. 
and formal barbarians will start span, will basically start coming in. So how's everybody's day? Oh, my day has been completely lovely. It's just now uh, really kind of starting. Ah, surviving slowly. it seems like I can actually now bring this group down here as we our first and next wave of settlement being that we're now in the ancient era we can um, actually deploy proper settlers and we're no longer hindered by the uh, tribal limit so we're gonna probably set up these coastal cities well still large villages but along this coastline we're gonna probably set up our next wave of expansion very shortly And we got the way of the leech. Yes. And we got our first major war party. And we'll leave this party over here in case we get more of a barbarian problem. Place our old war party over here. Actually, we'll bring them down to do what they originally were made for, and that was stamping out any Neanderthals that show up in our little under valley. See, we now have settlers, and we also have the ability to produce workers, so we're going to produce six workers and have them go around and start basically getting everything nice and improved. Fun thing about the worker compared to the gatherer is the worker doesn't um, kill itself when it makes an improvement, so they'll stay around so long as nobody else comes in and, you know kills them. We can also have a llama rider, which is funny to think about. If you know anything about llamas, I'm pretty sure the llama would not be happy having somebody ride on it. forest and in the grassy plains. Now we can start really taking advantage of us being in this lush valley as we should be very shortly, most likely after we get into agriculture, able to move this wheat source and start planting other wheat sources around in the valley. And we should see our population really explode after that. Also, we want to um, go into our automations and make sure we got all the um, fortification buildings turned off so we don't have just a giant fortress. Camps. Weapon camp. Uh, 
And that should be good. What's the plan? Your orders. Place them on defense. Now remember how our watchtowers work. I don't know if I explained it or not, but for them to be active, they have to have somebody on them. So now that we've got somebody back manning the watchtower, we can see a little further along the coastline and have a better idea of what's going on. This plains area will continue to spit out a lot more bad things until we settle it. We might actually move first into the plain, simply because of this river system. The river connects to the coastline, so it will connect to the existing river, meaning that everything that Britannia and Zuko has built, all the resources it has access to, will be accessible to any city that's along these rivers. Caveman to Cosmos is very much a lot more. You gotta kind of keep an eye on how you're positioning things. Later on, we won't be able to rely just on our um, river networks, and we'll have to worry about our um, about our road networks. Let's see. Do we have the planters yet? No. Let's get our storytellers out and about. Now a big change for us is going to be whenever we actually collect um, agriculture. Gatherer huts are nice, but they don't ha remotely match the output that we can actually produce. Proper agriculture. What do you need? Come and take care of these hunters. The body is a community made up of its innumerable cells or inhabitants. The ancient way of the fist. The ancient way of put of basically punching. So our governments are really going to be changed. Basically, how we act as a society will change quite heavily here in the ancient era. And we got our first major change, which is charity for our welfare. Instead of just being survival of the fittest, we now have people trying to actually take care of one another. Are exploring. We already have the fire dance and the blood dance ready to go here. <laughs> Glorious one on one combat. Uh, unfortunately, that's not how we get our population nice and big.
See, the hunters do have self-preservation. Um, so they are trying to get away from my little war party. <laughs> Ought to build a nice society, though. I need more um, workers. I mean, I need more... Um, I mean, I need more... Um, Willing subjects who are not at all forced to work the lands for me forever. They must have doubled back on themselves. Oh, speak of the Flying Dutchman. There it is. Who says we're giving these other people stuff, though? <laughs> What does this do? Yeah, that's right, Ember. Less people. Less people equals more stuff for us. <clears throat> I think I've made a habit of saying this every episode, but I wish whenever I made this game I turned off the espionage. I keep forgetting how ridiculous espionage is in Civilization 4. Because now I can basically see everything until they actually... Until the AI registers, hey, I can actually see what they're doing. Eventually, they will. And we'll start fighting my espionage. Oh, go away, Flying Dutchman, please. Please just go away. That's right, don't destroy don't destroy my fish this time. Oh look at that, another freaking volcano just randomly exploded. did those hunters go? Now I'm curious. So right now we are still in the um, Neolithic. We're in the late Neolithic right now. Even though we're in the ancient era, the Neolithic is actually divided between two different eras. But that will change. So I'm going to get ready and uh, set up our next city. Um, how about the chat put in some name suggestions? what it will be. Madone. <laughs> so we want a couple of healthcare workers and a couple of dogs. And our settler.
Don't know right where I'm going to put this settlement yet. Oh, come on. Oh, we're going to have a bit of a fun time with these volcanoes. But I'm thinking I want to take advantage of this salt that's up here. Chick coops. Yes, the volcanoes were here first, and we took the volcanoes' lands. How dare we? And now they're fighting back. There's the Neanderthals. We gotta poke them with our sticks. I blame Ember. It's her fault. It's obviously her fault. It's because Ember isn't doing like 50k healing every every match in Overwatch. And the volcano has already gone dormant, so that's nice. Another... Scout ready to go. Well, another archer. Remember, if anybody here who hasn't been watching this series, Mount Ozai, which is right here, even though the volcano has gone extinct, I'm not sure that it's actually extinct, and it was a super volcano. So if this explodes, there's a good chance that the explosion will destroy everything within roughly this radius. It's a pretty big boom when they go off. Is that going to stop us from putting more cities in the vicinity of the bay? No. Your orders. We will take our risks. Got our civil defenders. And finally have taken down the Neanderthals. Go away. This is my land. We can see nothing, whatever of the soul, unless it is visible in the expression of the countenance. One might call the faces at a large assembly of people a history of the human soul, written in a kind of Chinese ideograms. So with ideograms, we have our first primitive form of um, like basically a written language. We can start making tablets, frescoes, and the labyrinth, along with Cleopatra's needle. This is the uh, labyrinth where the Minotaur and stuff is supposed to be from. Which is actually a very nice wonder because it gives us a free tablet maker in every city. So we're going to want to actually build that. Build up our Ooh, 
Zuko has come along quite quickly. I'm going to build this wonder here. Improvement to fight criminals. Let's see if we can find anybody else around us. Some more healthcare workers. So anybody um, excited for Civilization 7 and the uh, news that we should be getting within the month? excited for it as well, especially being that a lot of the original team is coming back on to Civilization, and a lot of the uh, team that also worked on Civilization 4 is going to be basically back in working on it. So we got some puppos. Definitely want to um, give a visibility. <laughs> and the ability to take down criminals. And our healthcare workers are going to have bonus on disease control. That will help keep pandemics from exploding. So it looks like our workers have decided to go and just build lumberjacks everywhere in the ancient forest. So they are uh, starting to chop everything down. Luckily, these uh, kayakers are the actual units that we should be dealing with and not a freaking uh, pirate ship from the 1700s. So our little war canoes can actually uh, deal with these canoes. And not a cursed ghost ship. <laughs> Zuko is growing actually quite nicely into a proper city. Hopefully Potter can follow it as well. It is almost done with all of its uh, production buildings, so we should be able to build all the other stuff fairly quickly. Yeah, basically everything around this bay is going to be Avatar themed. Mostly because um, I think it was Queen that suggested naming this uh, volcano that was right here Mount Ozai. So this then became the Bay of Iroh, and then this became the city of Zuka. Uh, Zuko, and um, right over here, somewhere, I'm eventually going to put another city that will found the uh, river system over here, and it will be the um, city of Azula. Eventually one of the other cities in this area will become Azulon, and a few of the others. <laughs> Our volcano is still causing issue. Oh yeah, it'll be nice and close. We're not actually going to put anything directly on city-wise for this because I want to put a city here and I want to put a city here. 
together they will defend the uh, entrance to the bay because this will become our pretty big um, economic and um, naval center in this bay. Though for a while until I can actually get ships that can properly deal with this freaking damn thing. The Flying Dutchman is going to be a problem because it is not wanting to leave us alone for some reason. how everybody else is doing. There's that big stack of barbarians from before. Let's keep an eye on it. Let's actually send our war stack that we built a little bit ago up here to take care of it. Yeah, we got ourselves our next city ready to go and be settled. I'm gonna go and put it right here. That way we can start taking advantage of the salt that's up here. It's actually a little close, but it'll be alright. Let's turn on our squares. We can see from the squares that we want to try and make sure we have at least three and there's only going to be two squares from where we're going to put it. And the same way with Potter. So it's going to be really close to Potter and our capital Britannia, but it, it won't be a problem. It's a coastal city, so it can push out a lot more resources from the ocean. Build a nice tablet maker. Now if the Israeli civilization actually survives, it's in a very nice little area. It's got... One... Two, three... Four... Five. It's got also opium. So it has uh, five sources of food that it can take advantage of fairly quickly. There's also opium nearby. <laughs> oh yeah, nothing bad ever happened to the Israelis. Now we're going to go ahead and build ourselves a city. And it's going to be named Madong. Madong. Pyramids are beautiful. So we now have the nice and prosperous city of Madong. 
I'm gonna go ahead and start its production set of buildings. Followed by the carpenter and our defensive buildings. <laughs> A tax person and... Coastal cities give us a nice range of resources. And a storage pit to start us off. <laughs> and we're going to collect a little bit more wealth. We definitely want to have a bigger bank of wealth. Barbarian stack is still here. Yep, we're chasing it to the Australians. It can become their problem. Glory be to my Britannian civilization. We put our unwanted people to Australia. got anything um, unwanted over this way. That Maori scout is <laughs> not having a nice day. Just gonna chase him into a corner. If anybody is a big fan of just sitting back and having nice, long, relaxing games, I do heavily recommend Caveman to Cosmos. But to go through a whole game of Caveman to Cosmos, it is, um, it's pretty lengthy. Let's just put it that way. We have a defensive advantage. And this is a big stack of barbarians right here. We got our first wave of buildings is done in Potter. got all of our food, we got all of our production, so it's just down to our health care now. Being that it's in a swamp, health care is going to be very important. We don't want to make Shrek mad at us. Finish up these buildings. some trade going. And a Wonders tab. What's the plan? Yes. Can't build any new dances yet. At your service. Melee. What's the plan? General damage. 
and versus archers. Looks like we have run this. Oh no, they took out one of our units. It's okay, we will survive. This barbarian stack is probably going to continue into our lands, which is not good. Actually, we want to recall our war party and move them up. The actions of priests, warriors, commoners, and servants are appointed by the qualities born of their intrinsic being. So now we can get the caste system. <coughs> basically, to sum up the caste system, we're no longer tribal, but basically what your role in society is dictated by what your parent was. You could still move up in the caste system, but basically we're starting to get that structured system. Like you've got your nobility, you've got your business people, all that sort of stuff, and then you have your average Joe. Yeah, a little bit. Actually, um, family names becoming a lot more um, common is from the um, Normans. For anybody who has um, ancestry basically from um, basically Anglo-Norman descent, which they themselves get it from the um, Norse. Let's finish off this stack. Go away, away barbarians. Get out of my swamp! <laughs> I will just have a nice little heal up. <laughs> so on average, it wasn't very, um common up until after the 14 basically after the black death came through where you would see people with family names unless you were part of the upper nobility but it was a little different for people who were living in the anglo-norman societies and the same way with um scandinavia as a lot more of the common folk had family background names for anglo-normans it was mostly based off of professions So you would have, you know, Coopers, Smiths, that sort of thing. But then you would also have um, areas where they generally came through, like Dehofils. And then Great Deeds and otherwise would also eventually lead to a family name being given. And if somebody was particularly famous, influential, or otherwise, and this is something that they um, took from the Norse, then they would become the founder of a whole new family line. So, um... Rollo de Normandy, he got his last little section of the name, uh, de Normandy, due to the section of France that became known as Normandy. <laughs> Actually, if I recall right, De Normandy translates roughly to just of Normandy or the Norman. So anybody who came with like De Normandy would just be like, you know, the Northmen. Let's 
Let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Still waiting for the anarchy to be over, but we are doing quite well. So when it came to the Norse, it was more down to just their deeds, reputation, and how they conducted themselves. So if they got a certain type of a nickname, like Ivar the Boneless, um, Ivar was pretty famous in and of himself, so he founded the clan and dynasty Ivar. Which eventually became quite a few different larger Novitic um, families. But probably one of the more famous dynasties to come out of the Norse would be um, Sigurdsson. Which would be from Sigurd the Ring and his son was the legendary Ragnar Lofbrok. And it would be from the house of Sigurd that you would have most of the royal family of Sweden come descended from, or at least so they claim. <laughs> so it would be basically stuff like that. So there's your little history lesson for today. Now we're getting folk dance set up. What's the plan? Luckily our stack actually destroyed the barbarians and they didn't uh, march themselves any further. Though we now have a, a couple of stacks of American alligators just happily sitting in the uh, swamp over here. Uh, this place is becoming more like Florida up there, just alligators. an island. Getting some nice production and trade for off of this. And the city of Zuko is actually done with all their buildings. They're completely up to date, so that's very nice for us. We can start putting them on wealth construction. Basically wealth gathering. Though, unfortunately, the Flying Dutchman is still sitting here like, Hey, how are you doing? Remember me? Oh yeah, I know you can't you know, forget about me. Until it leaves, I cannot settle this island over here. And if you remember, this island has a whole bunch of prime timber on it, which would be very nice for our naval needs. As it makes all of our ships... As soon as it's connected and it goes back, it makes all of our buildings that uses any form of wood build quicker. Makes our ships stronger up until we're no longer building with um, wood. <laughs> Go away. Shoo, go away, you darn ghost ship. Uh, we're starting to get a lot more sea critters, being that we've got a lot more active civilizations along the coastline. So we're starting to see sharks and stuff appear. Yeah, that's right, Flying Dutchman. Go in that direction. Go bother the Australians. Go bother anybody that's not me. God, it's doubling back. <laughs> I 
Alrighty, let's go and found, found ourselves another city. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ho oh, oh. A couple of health care and a couple puppos. And our settler. And the next city that we're going to set up will be the city of Azuba, which will go right here. Do wheel, Ember, are you still uh, sitting around by chance? So in about an hour, because I'm going to stream this until roughly 12 in my, my time, so just about another hour, I'm going to switch over to Overwatch. Do either one of you want to join? Oh, they destroyed my fishing hut. How dare you? Oh, yeah, just let me know. Archers and our one defensive units over in here. Actually, this is a nice place to stop. We're going to stop for right here for right now. Just looking at all the things that are starting to happen around us. This is just a nice little stopping point. We'll have more cities under the settlements. We'll be uh, very shortly getting agriculture. So everything's quite nice. So thanks for watching everybody, um, come back in a little bit and we'll be switching over to Overwatch in maybe about 10-15 minutes. And remember, if you found this on YouTube, give it a like and subscribe, and if you found this on Twitch, go and support our uh, stuff on YouTube, and if you missed the entire series and want to catch yourself up, you can find it on YouTube. And if you found this on YouTube, remember you can watch all the streams live over here on Twitch. And we'll see you all later. Bye-bye.